Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Bailey Maddox, a fellow licensed massage therapist in South Carolina, the founder of the Supine Studio. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me. This is pretty awesome. I really appreciate it. So you're here as part of my ongoing series to interview a fellow therapist from all 50 states. I don't even think I've hit the 25 mark yet. It's uh, <laughs> it's daunting. That's a lot. <laughs> it's trudging along. I, I uh, sort of like one day I had the idea, and the next day I recorded the first one, and not realizing um, that 50 states is a lot of states. <laughs> yeah, it, it certainly is, especially when you, yeah, when you're trying to find people and talk to people. Yeah, but it's led to time. some. Yeah, it's led to some really interesting conversations, and I've really appreciated it so far. Getting all these different perspectives, especially what's going on in the world. It's it's yeah. it's good. It's good to keep us all talking. So, so the way I usually start is is a little origin story. So, how did what brought you to massage therapy? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's kind of a little bit of a long story. I have my degree in performing arts management. Okay. And I was um, up in Illinois uh, doing grad school for opera, had worked in opera for a while, and I realized it wasn't for me. I packed everything up, came home, found the first job I could take, and it was awful. Um, I was a newborn photographer in the hospitals. Oh, wow. Found out that I actually really loved like working in the hospitals, things like that. Um, but I realized- that sounds like, like it would be like adorable, but- You'd think, um, but yeah. see, I don't have kids. And having newborns poop and things on you uh, was not my, um, this is Elsa, by the way. Uh, it was definitely not what I was expecting. Okay. So I went, yeah, I went to the um, local tech college and I was like, give me an aptitude test something. I have got to get out of this. And the, the receptionist, she just looked at me and she goes, you should do massage therapy. And I was like, nope, I'm not rubbing butts. Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I talked to the program director and it was just, it was like the universe was like, yes, this is where you go. Um, yeah. so I've been rubbing butts since. <laughs> That's, there you go. Yeah, I keep, I, 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 was jo I don't know if, you know if it's a joke anymore. I was going to make a t-shirt that says, I touch butts, but then right <laughs> above the word in small print would say therapeutically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little t-shirt idea. I might put that together, but. So that that's it. You just that that's so interesting. Had you had much experience with body work before? Or? Um, not so much. I, at the time, I was really kind of in, into fitness and just trying to take care of my body. Um, I didn't even have a professional massage until I was enrolled in the program. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> I I hear that more often than I thought I would about people who go into massage therapy prior to even having a a massage. I think I had had one before I went into school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is interesting. So, okay, we got, a, we got a little origin story. So what does it take to become a massage therapist in the state of South Carolina and to maintain a license in the state? So, yeah, so um, getting your license is fairly easy. You have to have 500 um, hours from an accredited school, and then you need to pass the MBLEX. Okay. Now, it gets a little bit tricky if you're trying to come in from a different state since we don't reciprocate with any state. At all? At all. Oh, wow. Um, so the best way to do it is you have to apply to the board for an exemption if you don't meet that 500 hours in MBLEX. And okay. then they decide on an individual basis on whether or not um, you meet the requirements. So, if, so, for example, if I came from Oregon, I have more than, I think ours is seven. Seven or seven fifty. Why do I forget that now? But and there's an MBLEX, so they would probably look at that and go, "Oh, you're good." Yeah. Yeah. But say you were grandfathered in before the MBLEX was required for Oregon. Oh, I then, see. Then they would look at it and be like, mm, "I don't know." Sometimes they exempt it. Sometimes they say, "No, you need to take the test." Yeah. Interesting. And and what about to keep it going? What do you have to do in terms of CE? So we require 12 CEs every two years. We renew on the um, even year. So our renewal was supposed to have been June 30th before uh, what I call the Corona mess happened. Yeah. Um, they've pushed things back. Um, but we don't have any requirements on how those 12 need to be split up, if they need to be online or in person. 
as long as one of the national organizations has accredited that provider, it okay. counts. Yeah, 12 every two years. That's a pretty low bar it's in, in terms of what I've seen, yeah. But at least there's some requirement I can see. I mean, in my mind, in my mind, it's always like, oh, we're therapists. We love to keep learning. We're all going to like take as much CE as possible anyway. But sometimes it kind of slips and you forget and you put it off. And so it's good that there's a, a requirement in place for, for different states, some more than others. Yeah, South Carolina is really trying to up that to at least be a little closer to the norms because um, I think, is it Georgia or North Carolina right next to us? They require like 24. And yeah. eventually, I think South Carolina wants to at least reciprocate with our neighbors. Mm, that's smart. Yeah. So uh, this is May 20th, 2020. And we are still in this unfolding uh, crisis. Can you, can you give me a little sense of how things unfolded there and, wh and what's the state of your state at this time? So um, late March, um, I think it was March 29th, the mayor for my city um, closed all non-essential businesses. So things were kind of city by city. And then a couple of days later, maybe March 30th or so, the governor came on and mandated all massage practices across the state close. Um, and he tied us in with the emergency or the state of emergency. Um, so as long as that was in effect, we were not allowed to practice. Um, about a week ago, he gave us permission to reopen on May 18th. Okay. Two days ago. Two days ago. Okay. And, that, and that's where you're at. And, and are, uh, are most people reopening or is there a, is there a caution? How's that, how's that unfolding? It really depends business by business um, mm -hmm. because some of us were able to open a little bit earlier with an exemption from the uh, state of commerce, depending on our... I guess how we run our business and the things that we do. Um, a lot of my peers in the city are waiting until June 1st, maybe even longer. Mm -hmm. And part of it is just the financial stress of this. Um, trying to gather all of the cleaning supplies, the PPE, and you know, just uh, trying to upgrade all of our regular practices. Yeah. Everything is just so back ordered. So you're back into it. Yes. Yeah. And so just so like so, you know, from my perspective, like I understand that these decisions are like really personal and they're very complicated and there's like a lot going into it. And there's a lot of, a lot of chatter from, from either end about whether or not we should be at it. And there's a lot of like, uh, I don't know, animosity. There's, there's a lot of, it's a complicated time and a complicated conversation. But so from your perspective, like what went into that decision to reopen and what have you done what have you implemented in your practice to, to, to bring it up to the standard where you, where you felt comfortable? Yeah. Um, so I do a lot of orthopedic clinical work. I've always considered myself more on the medical and health side than the, um, the spa and relaxation. So a lot of my protocols were always to wipe everything down, to have waterproof barriers on everything. Um, so for me, it wasn't as difficult to reopen. Like I upgraded to like a true HEPA filter and some other things. Um, but for me, I wanted to get back, not because of the money, but because I'm helping my clients. A lot of my clients, we've been putting off surgeries or it's part of their rehab. Like it's, they need their body work to maintain a certain quality of living. Mm -hmm. And four weeks down was really difficult for a lot of them, especially my clients who have chronic migraines and TMJ issues. Mm -hmm. Um, so for them, you know, doing a zoom call, trying to do consults, having them do home care, it just, it's a crutch. It's not enough for them to what to, it's not enough for what they need, um, to have that level of relief. Yeah. Yeah. And are you, are you masked while you're practicing or? I am. And yeah. I have to say that is, um, it was really, it's really tough. Yeah. Um, the first week that I was back and I, I've taken a very decreased schedule. Um, so I'm only seeing a couple of clients a day, lots of time in between, but that mask sitting on my ears was triggering massive migraines, um, just about mm. every day. Oh, wow. And you know, you're learning 
to deal with a little bit more um, carbon dioxide within the mask because a lot of it does filter through, but you still have a little bit extra sitting there. Yeah. And extra breathing. And uh, I mean, it takes some time for your body to readjust to everything. Yeah. Yeah. And and have, have some of the clients been apprehensive or is everyone just like, we get it, we understand the risks, let's go. Like, what's the, what's the feeling of your client base? Most of my clients are really, they're ready to come back in. They've always felt very safe coming in. Um, so like when you look at my table, it's not just, you know, all the, the soft stuff and the wool and things like that. Everything has always been underneath a waterproof barrier. Mm. The chair is a vital chair. Um, in my lobby, everything is industrial, so it can be wiped down with cleaners. Mm. My clients have always felt very safe. And the extra precautions that I've taken, they're just like, yeah, that's great. Let's roll with it. Um, yeah. Even my oncology clients, I mean, they're petitioning their oncologists to let them come back in right now, even though they're still in that high-risk category. Yeah. So you, you, so you have seen a handful of people um, this week so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. I saw three yesterday. I think I've got another three tomorrow. And have you observed anything out of, out of the ordinary? Are they carrying a lot of extra stress? Are they what what what's happening in in people's bodies? I you know I'm not Oregon. I'm not going to be back at it probably until mid June or later. Yeah. So I'm just curious to, to from your perspective, like what what am I going to see? Wow. Um... <laughs> To put it lightly, everybody's shoulder, neck, and just spine is just completely trashed at this point. <laughs> That's a clinical <laughs> term. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's no good way to put it because everybody has just been sitting for long periods. And so, like, they're getting the tension in their chest and it's translating up the neck. The lumbar spine is just, it's not happy. The sciatica yeah. is flaring up. The T spine is crunchy if we want to use that term i mean it's it's awful um yeah. and they're having even if they don't feel stressed everybody around them is stressed that herd stress is really just putting down on them especially if they're out of their routine and now they've become a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home parent trying to homeschool and work 40 hours remote like it's not pretty. Yeah, yeah. So that's on the on the client side. What do you feel like the crisis has? I mean, it's still evolving. Obviously, how is it changing our industry? Maybe from from a more macro perspective. I think. Um, ooh, I don't, I don't know really how to say this without sounding um, impolite, but I think it's really going to herd out and thin out our industry for those who want to take this serious. And who want to treat this like a career versus a hobby. Okay. I think that's and, a fair uh, approach. Yeah. Because, you know, there's going to be a second wave. There's going to be times where we're going to have to shut down. Like here in South Carolina, if one of my clients tests positive, I have to shut down for two weeks. Right. Um, and so, you know, just not everyone's going to be in that financial position where they want to entertain that idea or to be in a career that's so uncertain or to take these extra precautions of wiping down the toilet seat between every client and the water um, faucet handles and the iPads and everything else. I think other people are going to want more, more cushioned jobs, more secure jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I think there is going to be a certain amount of turnover and then, and then a, a real consideration for people who maybe were about to enter the field. Mm -hmm. I wonder what will happen to the, to the number of therapists, which is only sad because as you said, like what you're observing in bodies, like the world is gonna need us now more than ever after this, especially after this collective experiment and touch deprivation. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think it's gonna be really hard for South Carolina. So when I went to school four years ago, there was a full scholarship, including the fee to take your MBLEX because South Carolina recognized that there was a lack of massage therapist in the state. Mm. And we're still seeing that. Um, basically here, you can almost write your own paycheck. You can say, hey, I wanna work these hours. And if you're good enough, you can go to from spa to spa and find a place that will accommodate your needs. Hmm. That's interesting. What, so so this, the Supine Studio is your own private practice? Yes. 
what led you to start that outside of uh, working for someone else? So um, the, I always kind of wanted to work on my own because I like to have my own schedule and I want to take client time with my clients. The big push was um, honestly working for somebody else. It was very difficult to take time off to take CEs. Oh. And I don't think just taking 12 or 24 every two years is going to be enough. Mm -hmm. um, to give you an idea, I took about 150 just last year, all live in person. And wow. I would not have had that freedom if I was working for somebody else. Yeah. And your, your approach, you're doing like, um, like personal training style too, or you, so you kind of have a, a more holistic. Right. Yeah. Um, so when a new client comes in and tells me that they're having say shoulder pain, cause that's one of the, the biggest ones that I see while we, you know, while they're talking to me, I'm looking at them for a breath assessment. I'm seeing if their ribs are moving. Um, then we do a couple of movement assessments. So I see how their range of motion is their neck. We do a couple of different range of motion test and then we pinpoint where the issue is and then we treat it with body work oh well we don't treat in south carolina we uh, address it with body work okay yes state to state we have to worry about our language don't we we do um and then they get home care to help you know s strengthen those weak muscles take pressure off of things and then i give them stretches to do that help open up those tight muscles so open up their chest take pressure off so that they're not going closer and closer to frozen shoulder. They're going closer and closer to what they actually should be allowed to do with their body. Yeah. That's great. So um, I wanted to circle back to something you mentioned, and I think it's something you specialize with. Can you talk a little bit about migraines and how they're different than headaches and like what you do about migraines in your practice? So what I do, um, yeah. So migraines is, I do see a lot of migraines because that was kind of my initial first specialty. And with them, I always check to see um, where their head position is to see if there's pressure on those nerves coming out of the, out of the skull, like, you know, right, right down the vertebral column to see if there's extra pressure there. Um, and then I also ask them, you know, does it radiate into your jaw? Is it up in your temple? Because a lot of clients don't know if they're having migraines or if they're having headaches. Mm -hmm. So it gives me a little bit more information. Um, and I always ask them to, you know, when was the last time you talked to your doctor about this? Mm -hmm. Because some, they get so used to it. They don't think that it's, um, that it's not normal. Um, yeah. but yeah, with a migraine, lot of them, migraines tend to hit you, hit people a lot heavier. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't, most people, they can't drive, um, or like they're very sensitive to light or sound like, it's a little bit different from a tension headache, which a lot of clients experience. Right. But most of, most of them, um, we use cryotherapy. I will generally either put ice or a cold stone directly on the back of the neck to help reduce that nerve response so that we can go in, relax the muscles and take pressure off the nerves. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, uh, I've been producing some some videos and some self-care tips. And I did a little series on headaches, but I made it clear that that migraines were sort of a different beast. And um, I've had some requests to make some some content about migraines. So I'm trying to, I don't, I want to give a good overview. Yeah. For that kind of thing. yeah, that's great. Well, so I, I'm going to be curious to follow along with you and see how how the the reopening goes there. I know there's a, there's a lot of eyes on all these states that have some reopenings happening, and um, I certainly hope that things go well and there's not a sudden resurgence. And um, all of you, you and all your clients are staying safe. And yeah, so thank you so much for being on the Massage Hodge podcast. Well, thanks for having me. This was really great. And giving us an overview of South Carolina. I really appreciate it. And we'll chat for a couple more minutes off this recording. And we will wave goodbye to the viewers and listeners. And thanks so much. If, you, if you're listening to this, please subscribe and rate and review and all that jazz. I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time.